Hello everyone, this is Devabrata once again and today I'm trying to implement few sample classes by which uh, the idea of class and object will be more clear to you because we have already uh, done few of the things on the for loops, on the if and we know how to write a simple program but in real world everyone delivers a project or delivers a code in a form of class. Obviously, they do not send, suppose we all are working in a project, obviously, we will not send raw code to, uh, to the team lead or to our colleague. We try to create a class. We try to develop a class as our end output. So obviously, uh, probably means uh, uh, if you are uh, working in a 10% team, each one of them will be working on some functions. As a whole, all of them are trying to build a class by which some other user will just create an object of that class and just use that without knowing the details of program you have written. Whatever I'm saying, if I try to represent that with some examples, I think that will be more clear to you. In last class, if you are following the playlist one by one, in the last class, we have already done, or we have already implemented the Arrelease class. Arrelease is already available in our uh, util package. Means if you just uh, check in the Google, the Arrelease class in Java, without knowing the details, you can simply use that by just calling an object of that class. We have already discussed that in last class, but today we will try to check few more examples. And obviously, uh, with doing that, we will also try to learn few of the interview uh, questions, interview topics like buffer reader, wrapper class, auto boxing, auto unboxing, uh, use of constructor, those things we will try to learn. So as a prerequisite, I can say if you have an idea of the building stack and queues, uh, you will find that in our class a 5.3 array application. If you can revise that class once, that will be very helpful because today we will try to create a stack class. So I will not focus on the logical parts, how we have written the for loops, how we have declared the array. I am assuming you know that. If you do not know, so as a prerequisite of this class, I will request you to just go through those stack implementation logical things. Okay, so here today, we will try to create that class once again. So if I go to the blue Java and if I just create a new class, so let me give a name of this class as stack. So previously what we have done, uh, we have done, I can simply copy and paste the code, but I'm not, I'm not going to do that today. So whatever we have learned during the stack uh, in our uh, array application class, that class I have referred to, class number 5.3. I'm trying to build that once again. So in a stack, we have an array. Suppose, let me take that array uh, with five sides. And obviously, we have some top of the stack. What is the meaning of that? Probably you know that. Uh, we have a, a stack means, uh, if you do not know, uh, first I will request you to revise that class. But still, if you have done that, uh, you are forgetting all those things. Just for a reminder, uh, stack operates on LIFO functionality. LIFO means whatever you are inputting last at the time of deletion, you will you are going to see that at first. Suppose you are entering 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50 one by one. At the time of deletion, you will get 50, means 50 will be deleted at first and 10 will be deleted at last. So whatever you have inserted last, that will be coming out first. So that's why it is being called as LIFO. So uh, initially, the top of the stack, I will try to mark them one by one. So top of the stack is marked as minus one. And I'm going to write the functions one by one. Um, on the last, uh, on that, uh, class in 5.3 array application, we have just checked how to build the stack without putting them inside the function. It was a raw code. So I'm going to write the same code once again, but this time I will be putting all of them inside the corresponding functions. And I will try to build a 
class and method techniques. So I am, I am putting everything under class tag. Suppose we are a four person team. So I will give one task for the person one. Like uh, I will be telling them like, okay, build push function. I will give another task to another person like, okay, uh, create uh, pop function. Pop means delete, nothing else. I will give another person a task like uh, build display function. So that is how it will be easier for us to segregate the task. Otherwise, if I if everyone try to send the raw code, obviously, person one, obviously, they will be using some for loop. They have used probably uh, variable i, j, k, something like that. The second person might be using some variables like x, y, z. So the person, the fourth person who will be, means who will be gathered all those code, he will be confused. He will be confused. And it is really tough to gather all the codes written by all other means written by different different persons suppose each people worked e one month on some project and at the end if someone is gathering one month's work of each and every team member he will be just uh, means he will be he will leave the job because it is not a uh, easy job for him to uh, combine all the codes written by all the team members without knowing the meaning without knowing what they have written and what for they have written, they do not, means that person will be puzzled. So it will be easier if we give them a task and just tell them like, okay, deliver the task in terms of function. So the person who will be writing the push function, so he will just concentrate on his work, his or her work. So he will be just checking like this. If the top of stack, reach to a length minus one simply i'm going to show a message like uh stack is full the dry run you can see in that class 5.3 just revise that i think the idea will be clear uh otherwise if the stack is empty or stack is half filled i'll be just increasing the value of t it was initially minus one so i'll increase that it will be t zero so at that position, A0 will be value. So whatever value that is coming from outside, I'm putting that inside A0. Next one, T will be 1. Next turn, T will be 1. And I'll be putting the next value to the place 1. Initial value will be uh, inserted into place 0. A0 equals to value. Next, A1 equals to value. And accordingly, it will go on. For the pop, the person who is uh, taking care of this function development, he will simply check if t equals to equals to minus one, he or she will just print. I mean, suppose if anyone is trying to delete something when the stack is totally empty. So here it will be displayed like stack is empty. That's all. And if it is, if some elements are there, I will just going to print like AT, the top element is deleted or is popped, whatever you can use, your your choice, and T equals to T minus 1. Suppose we have inserted two values, 0 and 1. I mean, 10 and 20 we, have, we are inserting. So, 10 will be placed at A0 position and A1 will be 20. So, the value of T is currently 1. So at the time of deletion, A1 will be deleted. That is, A20 means 20 will be deleted and T will become 0. So now if anyone again hit pop, next time 10 will be deleted. Okay, I think the idea is clear. If not, I can try to explain, but it is already explained. But still, initially the value of T is 0 and 10 is inserted. After that, T will be here at 1. And I will be inserting 20. So each time T will be increased by 1. You can see the code here as well. T is increased by 1 and A T equals to that. So next turn, if someone tries to push something, T will be increased to 2 and 30 will be inserted. Suppose anything, the value can be anything. It might be 70 as well. Anything, any value. Now at the time of deletion, 
is the latest value. T is holding the value of two. So you can see here the code. I am simply writing AT is deleted or AT is popped, whatever you can say. So the value as at position two will be deleted. That means 70 will be deleted. And it is maintaining that order as well. LIFO, whatever inserted last is deleted first. So 70 will be deleted. Okay. And the value of T will decrease to one. So next time, if anyone try to delete something, 20 will be deleted. And the value of t will decrease to zero. So something like this will happen. So a t is popped and t equals to t minus one. For the display, something similar will happen. If anyone wants to see the stack, when there is no value, means when t is minus one, then it will show stack is empty. Otherwise, I will try to run a for loop that will be starting from t from the top till the value is 0 and i equals to i minus 1. And I'm trying to print all the value of the stack using a i and that's all. And that is our stack program. It is done. So three people will deliver three functions. And the fourth person will combine all those code like this. So now if I compile and it will be behave like a class. So now if I try to create an object of that stack, suppose uh, let me create an object with my name, Guha, say. So it is my stack. So now I can, uh, suppose uh, I want to pop something. I want to delete something at the, at the starting. Obviously, I have not inserted anything, so it is showing stackism. If I want to see the details of my stack, obviously it will show stack is empty because it is really empty. I have not inserted anything. So now if I insert something, suppose I, if I insert 10, so 10 is inserted somehow. If I insert 20, 20 is inserted. If I insert 30, 30 is inserted. So now if I want to check, Display, you can see 30, 20, 10. So now if I want to delete something, so the last value will be deleted. 30 is popped. The code is very simple, but it is it is uh, representing a LIFO structure. It means it is very important, but code-wise it is that simple. So 30 is popped up. So now if I display, only 10 and 20 will be displayed. Okay. So now let me insert a couple of more values to make the idea clear. Let me insert 40 this time. Let me insert again uh, 50, say. And let me insert 60. So we have all five values here. If I display, so 60, 50, 40, 20, 10. So now if I want to insert some other values like 70 or anything, it will show stack is full because obviously we have written that. So that's the idea of a stack. Just I want to uh, mention one thing. If someone wants to uh, create a stack with a, a variable size, because here I have uh, introduced the stack with size five. But if user wants to control that, user wants to control the size of the stack as well, how to do that? So this is an idea of the constructor. And this is an example where using constructor is mandatory. You cannot implement that without using constructor. Again, my requirement is user will control this size. User will control this size. So there is no other way by which you can control this size. So how to control that? Let me show you, then it will be clear what I'm trying to say. So if you introduce a constructor here, and I, I think constructor at the idea of constructor is clear uh, for the time being, it is the basic idea of class and object. So now here, inside the constructor, I will pass some value like X or anything like size, anything. And here you can declare int a equals to new int size that you can do you can delete this line so here from the outside that size will come 
and you will introduce the size here at the time of array declaration. So you have to place this code here. But there should be another problem if I if I place the code inside the constructor. If I compile, this A will be local. You can see it is already given some error. If I compile, you can see at the at the below it is showing some error. The error is this A, this A cannot be found because it is local variable. It is declared inside this bracket. So no other functions can recognize this array. So that's why it is giving some error here. It is not showing the error message correctly, but it is showing error found in this class. It is not successfully compiled because we are in, we are declaring, we are introducing this array inside this bracket inside this constructor. So no other functions are able to recognize that because it is not global. So if you want to re recognize that, you have to declare it here first to make it global. So everyone can recognize A. And here inside, you have to write A equals to new in size. So size will come from outside and it will be assigned in this way. So the half part will be written on the top and the half part will be written inside. So you are making the array global as well as you are making it dynamic. The input is coming from outside. So what I'm doing now, if I compile, you can see it is successfully compiled. So what I tried to build, suppose I'm creating a stack for, uh, a suppose for myself. So it is asking for size. So I am, I am giving five size for my stack. I can control that value. I am creating another stack for my student. Suppose some student called student one. I'm creating a stack for him. So I'm giving a size three. You can see. So now I'm creating another stack from for my student two. Suppose for her, I'm giving the size like uh, seven. So uh, she will be dealing with a stack with size seven. So now if I just take the stack of student one, and if I push few items like 10, like 20, and like 30. So the size of the stack of student one is three, if you can remember. So now if I try to insert the fourth item, that is 40, it will be showing like stack is full. So it is able to remember the different versions. So if I display, it is 30, 20, 10 for the student one. So this is the way how can you make, we have learned two things. This is the way how you can put all of your knowledges, all of your coding practices inside a class, moreover, inside into a function. And you are also creating the stack in a dynamic way. And here we are using the efficiency of the constructor. So in this place, constructor, knowing constructor is mandatory. Otherwise, you cannot make this kind of program that much dynamic. The size here is dynamic. Many persons can create many objects of this class with the dynamic size, the size as per their choice. So that's the thing. I hope you, you got the idea. So that is a stack class. So you can, you can put it even in some package as well. So I can put something like util package, util, uh, let me put double L and here I can simply, you can, you can make, make it hidden. So you can simply write package util and that's all. Whenever you compile that, it will show a message like move. We have already learned that. So let me compile that. Okay. Let me do one other thing. Let me make everything public. Otherwise, uh, people uh, means from the outside will not be able to see that. You have that idea. We have already done the class of encapsulation. So I expect you know the meaning of it. Otherwise, people will not be able to see it. So if I compile now, now if anyone needs that class in a ready-made way, they will just call this class in this way. Let me put something like a demo class or something. Here, people will just call import util double L, that is our class, dot star. And here, class, suppose demo class. And here, 
पब्लिक स्टैटिक वॉइड मेन स्ट्रीनाक्स and here people will just call the object of that class what was the name it was stack i guess yeah stack obj new stack without knowing any details they will declare with size 5 or size 7 whatever you want so new stack oh, what is this showing oh stack int is not public okay my bad my bad i was thinking okay so here i have to make this one as a public as well let me compile here so it is compiled so the normal people without knowing that details they will just import something from the util package and just create the object of the stack class and after that they will call it uh, inside the main function or by creating the red color objects those thing whatever they can do so yeah so obj dot display say so my purpose is not to show you the for loops not to show you the if else conditions and my purpose is just to show you how we can create a class we can hide them and for the external people external user that will be that much of simple for them it will be that much of easy thing they will just create an object of that class and use it by checking the list of functions so we will disclose like okay in google it will be written like this stack class will be having three functions like push pop and display they will be just using that without knowing the codes without knowing the for loops they will be just using that if they want they can create a stack of size 7 they can create a stack of size 10 whatever they can do so our output will be as a class okay so we will deliver something as a class and we will segregate the task as methods so that will be our final goal so that was a topic one we will just learn three topics today so quickly if i move to topic 2 so implement a class scanner so before going into that scanner class first i will show you how to take some inputs how to take some inputs normally because when i was a student i didn't know there is a class called scanner frankly speaking you you might believe me you might not believe me but still uh i learned java from a book called harvard shield because at that time internet was not that frequent it was not easily available so i learned that from harvard shield i have a version like java 2 i have a book with version java 2 at that book uh, initially we have uh, learned everything array matrix function you will not believe we never learned how to take the input we have learned function we have learned string we have learned matrix array everything but we didn't know how to take the input because taking input was that tough so here i will show we learned uh, taking input from that book I'm, i'm i'm telling you the name of that book as well if anyone has doubt i can um, print the version and i can paste the version of that pages as well uh, of java 2 that version i don't know what is the what is written in the latest version probably they are using scanner class now but at that time uh, we didn't use scanner class we used we used to use a uh, buffer reader so i'm i'm going to show you and it was introduced later means in, not in the initial chapters so when we learned uh, because in the initial day if anyone shows us this kind of tough codes uh, surely people will go to other languages people will move to the python or c c++ because no one will like java if someone uh, knows how to take input using buffer reader on the very first day i'm showing you it is it is very tough code i'm saying it so it is something like it looks something like this buffer reader br new buffer reader uh, okay first thing you cannot remember this tough code and here new input stream reader Okay, capital small. I have to take care on, otherwise it will show an error. So it is very tough. It is very tough. Um. Uh, uh, so after that, I have to write system. Dot out. Dot println. You can write enter. Um. Uh, enter a number that we generally write. So here we have to keep something like string s equals to sc dot. Uh, not sc. We do not have anything like scanner. so br dot read line so this is the old way to take the input br dot read line i'm doing something wrong 
okay it is saying ki, you have to put some try catch block as well okay let put some try catch as well so let make it more complicated because it is a complicated way so let me write string s here something like this and s here so we need to remember this stuff way and that is the reason people do, do not disclose how to take the input on the first day i'm trying to make it that much simple because i'm not putting any line in the catch statement i'm trying to make it small but still it is uh, that long that complicated i know and that's why i'm also doing that i'm i'm showing that on a class like this i i didn't show you this way on the initial classes so because it is really tough so at the end x equals to i'm doing something like integer dot parse int and s and uh, now i guess it is done and now i can finally I can print something print ln something like x the value of x i can finally print so after doing all those things so let me compile yeah it is compiled and uh, let me run this thing so I'm, i will just check if it is able to take one input or not so if i'm i'm giving 10 and yeah it is printing 10 successfully so this is the way this is the traditional way how to take input but obviously i'm not telling you to remember all those things buffer reader uh, read line all those things you do not need to remember so uh it was our bad luck uh, we have to remember this tough code but at that at, at this generation some someone uh, some good people create another class so suppose let me give a name of this class as uh, what can i give a name of this class class cls cls for class and here they have written something like void meta meta method so they tried actually to hide all this complicated code in their function okay so they put all those complicated thing into their function okay all those thing in return, they are saying, you do not need to do anything much. You just create an object of this class, CLS OBJ, new CLS. That's all you have to do. And here, just call int x equals to OBJ dot that method. So that method will return something in integer. Obviously, it should not be void. Otherwise, how can it return something? So here at the end, I will return the value of x. So if I compile, it will be compiled. And if I run, I know you, you have some doubts, but still I am trying to show you if I enter 10, it is printing 10 successfully. So we are able to input something successfully. But for the normal user, it make we are making their life easy. We are just creating an object of something you do not need to take a look into this class. So someone is doing that on behalf of us. You just need to concentrate on this class and object. You are just writing as we write now, like we write something like this, enter a number. We are taking the object and calling the method and we are printing the value. Still, still, if it is doubtful to you, let me make some changes. Let me make some nominal changes with their name. So we know some good people created this class with the name of scanner and this class with the name of next int. Now it will be clear to you. So we what we do nowadays, we just call scanner obj and new scanner. So scanner is basically a class. But from the very first day, we didn't know that. We use that in a way that it is readymadely created by someone, but it is not true. Someone took the load and someone put all those complicated code in, in the next in function. If I make it more comfortable for you, so OBJ, we used to take it as SC. So SC, from the very first day, we learned to take input on our first class when we didn't know anything about Java. We learned that on the very first class. 
So from the very first class, we are using the object. So SC is basically object. You can name it SC, you can name it OBJ, whatever. We are able to take the input anyhow. So here, this is the thing we are doing from the very first class. We are introducing scanner SC, new scanner. Yeah, we used to write system dot in here, but for the timing, I'm not doing that. So some good person did all those complicated code. Some good person has written all the complicated for code for you inside the next in function. And that code is basically hidden. Okay, so what we are doing, we are just creating the object of scanner class. And after that, we are calling that method. And that method consists all the of codes. So what they do, obviously you cannot see the scanner class code in your, uh, in your, uh, uh, coding uh, environment because this code is hidden. Where it is hidden? Inside the util function. So what I will do now, I will create a class here. Suppose let me give a name like scanner. And here I will put that code. And here I will write package util. And here I will write everything like uh, public so that everyone can access that. And here I can write something import java dot io dot star because it was also a part of that code. So all the complexities I put into scanner class into the method next thing. And I'm, I put everything into the util, uti double L. It is our package. It is not the ready-made package available in Java. So we have make everything available here. Uh, okay. I didn't declare it public. Otherwise it will not be accessible. Yeah. So now if I go to the demo thing and if I import IO is not needed anymore. So we are just uh, calling util.star. It is our package. Okay. It is not java.util. It is UTILL. So now if I compile, it will work. It will work. Simply it will work. So for you, the code is that simple. This scanner is built by us just a few minutes ago. So without knowing, we can take the input. It was not available in our days. So we have to, unfortunately, we have to use those tough code of buffer reader. But yeah, it is good to know the buffer reader as well, because sometimes in the interview round, they generally ask what is buffer reader, how you are going to use that. So it is better to learn, better to know all those things. But this is the way we are using from the very first day. Without knowing the details, like next int is basically a method. Scanner is basically a class. SC is basically an object. Okay. So you can name it anything. You can create, call it as object as well. So still it will work. But okay. Uh, let me make it very familiar to you. Now, if you want to take input some uh, double thing. So obviously we used to call SC dot next double. But in our class, it is not developed. If I compile, it will give the error because uh, obviously we do not have we do not have anything called the next double. Nothing is created here as next double. So again, someone, some good person created scanner class for us. They have all, also created next double as well. So we can we can take some time and we can create one by one all those methods for the other users. Here, scanner class is already developed. So we are trying to build something similar like them. So this is the way how you can input something. So how you can convert something from string to double. Okay, I, I forgot to explain. This is the way how you can convert something from string to int. We have already discussed that in, in our string classes, but still, if anyone is new here, so they can... Uh, at least they can relate to this. So double, you are returning double variable because X is declared as double. So obviously we have to put double here. So that's the thing. Now, if I go to our, uh, our normal program, if I compile, so double should work. You can see class is compiled successfully without any error. So this is the thing, scanner class is also built by someone, but it is an abstraction, it is an illusion to us. Like from the first day, from the very first day, we think scanner class is something that we can use in a ready-made way. But no, all the complexities are hidden inside the class.
So these are some functions. We have already used next int, next double. You can simply use next line as well. So next line will be simple if I go to the scanner class because next line generally uh, is used to take some string input. So if I declare that, it will be rather easy because uh, by default, everything will be taken here uh, in string. So next line. So by default, read line input something inside string. Read line is the main, main function that used to take the input. Okay. So here you do not need to convert anything. So simply return it. That will be okay. If you compile, it will work. So these are the codes hidden behind the scanner class. So that's the thing. So now if we proceed and uh, if we try to search uh, more things like topics, we are the last topic for the day, uh, wrapper class. So if I tell you, uh, suppose something int a equals to 10.5. Can this line be executed? Your answer will be probably no, because integer cannot take uh, a numeric value. But why an integer cannot take numeric value? Why? Java doesn't know which one is numeric, which one is integer. A, the variable A cannot take an integer, uh, cannot take a numeric value because we have written something like this. So all the properties of int is being imposed on this variable A. So it is something like and class something like a class as well. So if I if I show you some example, let me delete uh, all this thing. So let me delete all this thing. So if we define it is something similar to this. So integer is basically a class. So if I write something integer a or integer x equals to new integer and ten. So it is also and it is not a variable, it is kind of object of the integer class. So now if I write system dot out dot print ln x, so x will be printed as 10. Let me show you. So basically from the very first day, we are, uh, whenever we are writing something in text or something, we are basically creating the object of the integer class. But here, yeah, it is not uh, whenever we are writing in uh, y or something int y equals to 20 it is not an object it is being called as a primitive data type you can call it as uh, primitive something like that okay so and here it will be called as something like object of in, uh, integer wrapper class so uh, this is the thing but it is the sense if you if you can think the both are kind of identical, both are. Because here we are putting all the properties of int or all the properties of integer inside this variable y. And here you can, you can see it clearly, x is the object of integer class. So in the same way, all of our data types have some backup classes defined all the properties of integer are written inside this integer classes okay so if i focus more on this integer classes that uh, we are just knowing uh, now we never uh, knew this this type of classes exist so all the properties of integer classes are written here so now if i do something like uh, whenever okay uh, if I do something like string s equals to suppose uh, 10, suppose. And if I do, integer class has a few properties, few functions, like uh, int integer class has few functions. We will try to learn that. So idea of wrapper class first. So there are a few functions. We already know a few of them like parsing. Okay, or uh, value of, we have something like that. So there are a couple of functions. If you check in Google, you can learn that. But um, let me show you a few of them. So if you write first x 
plus 1. So 10 plus or x plus 5, say. The value of x is 10. And if you write x plus 5, x is string. So it will not print 15. It will print 105, 105. Let me show you. Because it is string, simply. It is simply a word. So 10 plus 5 will be 105. It is not an integer. So if you want to make an, make it integer, you can simply write integer dot uh, value of, if I can correctly remember the functions. Yeah, if I compile, now this x will be turned into an integer and now 10 plus 5 will be 15. Because now 10 is behaving like an integer. You can see it is no more 105. So integer has couple of functions, a list of functions, value of is one of them, parsint is one of them. So all these properties are of the property of integer classes. So now if we do something like the similar thing, if I want to hold them, hold the value inside some variable, so I can simply write integer dot parsint. We have just done it a few minutes back in the scanner class. So now if I print y plus five, it is also going to print 105. Let me show you where is the function here. Yeah, uh, sorry, not 105, why, what I'm telling. Uh, it is 15, obviously it is integer. We have done that just a few minutes back. So it is uh, integer dot parsint. Parsint is a function of integer class. We have many more, we have many more. We have uh, something called two string as well that is uh, used to do the reverse. Suppose we have something called index. Just try to practice all of them uh, or few of them. It is not that much needed. But still, uh, if you want to convert something to string, string s equals to something. So you can simply write integer dot two string. Again, I'm saying it is not that important for you. But still, you can convert it to string. Okay, I'm not going to print it. It's a simple thing. But you can. There are few functions defined for integer classes. Okay, so this is the idea of wrapper class. So there are few wrapper class, few backup class like integer, possessing all the properties of integer. Uh, we have a class called double, which is having all the properties of double thing. We have uh, many more classes, character. Uh, we have something called character. You can search everything in Google. So we have a list of functions available for those classes as well. Uh, so that's the thing. You can search in Google that integer class functions. So all the functions like this, will be listed there. But again, it is not important for you. Uh, in interview, they generally ask a thing called boxing and unboxing. So I want to give you some example. Like you can define an integer in two ways. Either you can write index equals to 10 that we are doing from the very first class. From the class number one, we are doing that. And you can define another uh, integer in this way as well integer suppose 20 but yeah you can print them in a natural way like i can print x and uh, y say so it is going to print a 10 and 20 so you can define it in either of the way so the first way we are learning it from the very first class and the second way we have just learned today so uh, where is the code yeah so now if you want you can do something like this, x equals to y. So now, if I'm going to print the value of x, let me compile. So x will become 20. Let me show you. Obviously, you can, you can even sense that x was 20, x was 10, y was 20. So if I'm doing x equals to y, obviously, x is going to print 20. So this thing is being called as unboxing. So here, in this way, it is having less freedom. And in x equals to 10, it is not being considered as an object. 
it behaves like an object but here x is basically variable so it is not an object it is not a complicated thing it has full freedom so uh, try to remember something like this otherwise you will be confused because in my college days when people ask me when interviewer ask me like what is boxing and unboxing uh, I, I was really confused with this term so which one is boxing and which one is unboxing both are similar so whenever you are putting you are converting one object into the primitive data type you are giving it a full freedom so that means you are unboxing them you are putting them from a box to the open sky suppose you are you are you are giving a freedom to a to a bird something like that so you are giving a freedom to this variable y so you are giving full freedom so here on the left side it is a primitive data type a variable and on the right side you are writing an object so our object has less freedom because object has to obey all the functions of this class. Whereas from the very first day we are using this and it is it is having a full freedom. We do not need to take any headache on this line because we are using it from the very first line. It is that much easy. But this line is complicated and having less freedom. So obviously if anyone is telling you to convert Y into X, it is a freedom to you as well. So it is being termed as, termed as unboxing. I'm not going for the definition. Definitions are listed in uh, in the link I will be providing you. So all the definition will be listing there. So but yeah, as an example, it is an unboxing. But if I write y equals to x, the value of y was 20. Now if I do y equals to x, then y will be printing 10. The, because I have written y equals to x. Y is taking the value of x. So y is printing 10. So in this example, you are basically boxing the bird. You are putting a bird inside the box. X was a independent variable. Now, just imagine in that way so that you can, you can put a uh, comparison in your brain so that you will not be confused at the interview room. So you are putting X inside Y. Y is in the left side and X is on the right side. So you are putting a free variable, independent variable inside an object. And that is the that is the thing we are calling it as boxing. Okay, we are printing it here x. Let me print y. But again, it will it is going to print 10 anyhow. You can you can sense that. But practice all those programs, otherwise, those theories will be uh, remain in your brain like a theory. If you just practice it once, whatever I'm doing today, it will be fully clear to you. So here we are doing this as boxing. We are putting uh, independent variable X inside Y. So it is being called as a boxing. So just try to remember uh, in whatever ways you can prefer. Okay. You have to remember that. Okay. That's the thing uh, is required in the interview room or in the Viva round. Okay. So just you have to remember. Anyhow. Okay, this is my way to remember. I am I am comparing it boxing and unboxing like a, a like a uh, I means example of a bird. Okay, so if you are giving them a freedom, so you are unboxing. If you are taking the freedom from them, so basically you are boxing. Okay, so that's the thing for the day. As an exercise, uh, I can I can suggest whatever trouble you can see in your surroundings whatever troublesome programs like uh, i can i can give some example like q we have done you can implement a class of dq you can implement a class of circular q whatever you have learned earlier you can you can create classes for that you can create a classes for matrix because uh, in my uh, uh, school days uh, during the mathematic classes it was always a trouble for me to find the matrix multiplication, matrix related uh, thing. So you can try to put everything inside a function. And for the normal user, it will be simply a function call. So the user like me, I will prefer to create an object of matrix class. It is not in, it is not there in Java yet. Okay, so you can create a, a class of matrix or class of Q by yourself. I will just prefer to call that object of that class and use a ready-made way without knowing the for loop written behind that. So that's a suggestion. You can try to create those classes and whatever. Yeah, as I was saying, whatever you think, 
that can be made simpler for the normal people like us, normal user. You can create something, you can create some class like that with some methods in it. Okay, so you can even mail those classes to me if you have any doubts or anything. And yeah, if you have any queries, any concern, anything you are, you are not able to understand, you can also share that in that comment section. Also, you can communicate to us uh, uh, using this Facebook group. So that's all. Try to create more classes, whatever we have learned till now, whatever uh, logic, whatever knowledge we have gathered uh, using array, using matrix, using string, functions, recursions, all of those, try to create some class and object because our final output will be a class and their methods. So I have tried to give you some examples, some idea of those classes. And now rest of the things are at your code. So uh, you can try to build some more classes by yourself. Okay. So that's all for the day. Bye.